Okay, so we're going to finish off a couple more examples here. I'm going to do one more with you from the table uh, here, dealing with a pH of 4.166. I've included the answers from uh, the rest of the table, so you should be taking a look at trying to match these, making sure that you can go through this table. The order doesn't really matter in how you do it, so long as you can just kind of find that logical step-by-step -step bouncing around and just filling in the next logical piece of information from here. So this represents a whole bunch of questions about one value at any one time. Uh, on the quiz or on the test, I would probably simplify these to one-step questions at a time. All right, maybe two steps, but probably not something tabular like this that has everything happening all at once. So be patient with it. Just go through it. Try and get the very next thing and then just see where that leads you. All right, so for example, I have been told that I have a pH of 4.166. Uh, let's take a couple of easy ones right off the top here. All right, this is a pH of 4.16. Is that acidic or basic? All right, under a pH scale, anything less than 7 is an acid, so I get to learn right away that it is acidic. I can also count my sig digs, so I can simplify my next bit of work. All right, 4.166. Now remember, this is a log value for pH. So only numbers after the decimal count, and so this is a three significant digit answer. All right, so for my concentrations, please remember those are regular notations. And for my POH, I'm probably expecting three decimal points afterwards as well. So let's go through there. We know that the pH is 4.166. Okay, so if my pH is 4.166, what can I figure out most logically? There's a couple of different ways we can go, all right. Uh, from a pH, I know that I can get my hydronium ion concentration really easily as I take 10 raised to the negative pH value. 10 uh, raised to the negative 4.166, when I run it through my calculator, all right, should be 10 raised to the power of 4.166 forgot my negative, 10 raised to the power of negative 4.166, works out to a number of 6.8233 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, three decimal, uh, three significant digits in 4.166, so there's three significant digits there, and so that would round me down. My answer here would be 6.82 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter of hydronium. Okay, so there's one of the numbers for our table. Some of you guys might have realized that with a pH of 4.166, I can go find pOH very easily. Remember that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So therefore, if I subtract pH from both sides, pOH is just equal to 14 minus pH. Well, we had 14 as a constant, minus 4.166. And so when you do that, 14 minus 4.166, you get 9.834 as your three sig dig pOH number. Okay, so those numbers can end up back in your table. All right, we found out a concentration here of 6.82. That was times 10 to the negative 5. And we had 9.834 as our pOH. There's only one thing left to do, and that's get the hydroxide ion concentration. That's most easily gotten from our pOH number. And so we just have to run through and do that one. Okay, so hydroxide ion concentration is just base 10 raised to the negative pOH. You have 10 raised to the negative 9.834. And so when you run that on your calculator here, you end up with, where'd it go? 1.47 times 10 to the negative 10, and there's your three-digit rounded answer. So, 
1.47 times 10 to the negative 10, and you have finished that part of the table. Okay, so the tables are just a way of getting you guys through a whole bunch of different questions, all based around the same kind of idea. It's a good way to practice your pH and your pOH conversions. All right, there's one other thing that we should kind of look at here. All right, a little bit more of a challenge question. What is the pH of a 0 0.0015 molar sodium hydroxide solution? Okay, I'm going to take this part out because we don't need to do that part. But I'm looking for pH, and I have a sodium hydroxide solution. Well, sodium hydroxide I know is a strong base. Hmm. Maybe I should take a look at the dissociation equation here to see if I can help work my way through this one. So sodium hydroxide, all right, does dissolve and does dissociate into its ions, which means it should produce sodium plus ions and hydroxide one minus ions in its dissociations. This is why NaOH is an ionic compound is a base, because it produces OH minus ions in solution. But for pH, I need to know the hydronium ion concentrations. So here's an example of why we like to use pH and pOH when solving these problems. If you remember from chapter 5, if you know the concentration of a fixed volume, such as 0 0.0015 molar, we can make predictions about the concentration of anything else in this particular solution. Okay, because NaOH is a one-to-one -one ratio, it dissociates into equal parts. So, if I have a 0, 0, pardon me, 0 0.0015 mole per liter solution of NaOH, because this is a fixed solution, when it dissociates, the volume is constant. I can go straight to my mole ratio, and I can see that I got one part hydroxide, for every one part NaOH that dissociates. So the concentration of hydroxide is 0 0.0015 moles per liter. Okay, I now have the molar concentration of hydroxide ions. I can use this, much like I was doing in the table, to move through and convert from hydroxide ion concentration all the way through to figuring out APH. So from here, I would suggest that if you have hydroxide ion concentration, it's pretty easy to get the pOH of the solution. pOH is equal to the negative log of your hydroxide ion concentration. In this case, it's the negative log of 0 0.0015. Put that into your calculator, negative log of 0 0.0015, and you get 2. 8, 2, 3, 9, da, 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 da. Okay, so we have a fairly low pOH number, but we're looking for pH. Well, remember, pH plus pOH is always equal to 14. So pH plus pOH being equal to 14, therefore pH is just equal to 14 minus the pOH, which is 14 minus 2.8239. And so if we correct this one, 14 minus the answer there, it gives us 11.1760. I just have to put this into the correct sig digs. I had two significant digits with my concentration, so I need two significant digits in my pH number. There's two of them, the six rounds up, and so your best answer here is 11.18. Okay, so sodium hydroxide solution, a strong base, should be basic, therefore I expected a high pH number. All right, very doable stuff. Just make sure you're getting appropriate practice in to be able to do it. Again, 242 to 244 has a couple more examples of moving between pH and pOH values. Try some of the questions on 243 and 244. And we have just one more topic to do for Chapter 6, and that is going to be 6.3 on using acid-based indicators to try and measure the acidity and basicity as pH and pOH numbers. Okay, good luck with that one. A couple more videos to go, and we're done Chapter 6. Good luck, guys.